So today we're going to talk about this masterpiece um, caravan that we've just completed. Dan's done a full upgrade um, and added a few extras. So we'll go inside. And Dan, do you want to start by telling us a quick summary of what you've installed in this caravan? Yep, absolutely. So it's a 400 amp hour, 1140 watts of solar with a 2600 watt inverter. Um, full Cymarine monitoring package. Uh, we've added in uh, a pass-through for Starlink and modified the cable to make sure that they can plug their Starlink in. Uh, we've reconnected their 240 so that the air, air conditioner works on um, their uh, inverter. Uh, so basically this van came with um, it's, I think it's like a four-year-old, five-year-old van, something like that, and it had um, a Red Arc Manager 30 system in it with a projector 2000 watt inverter, um, and the batteries were down on the chassis. Um, we've modified all of that, so we've taken Manager 30 out. As we talk about, it's a great little system, but it's just a bit small for um, the type of systems that we do. Um, you know, 30 amps isn't enough to recharge a battery to run an air conditioner, basically. So um, we've added in um, two separate solar regulators, a DC-DC, uh, like I say, a full Cymarine monitoring package. So um, this is also a post-November 18, 2023 build. So it complies to AS3001 um, part two, 2022 with regards to where lithium batteries can be installed and how they're installed so we've we've done all the requirements there from that perspective um, it actually hasn't changed the way we do our builds a lot it's slightly modified the way that we um, consider the build but certainly um, in terms of the um, technicality and practicality of the system that the, the uh, seat area is still where everything is mounted. So charges an inverter over one side, battery and isolation on the other side. Um, this seat box is completely sealed. So completely sealed and, and vented externally. Um, with this one, um, because Manager 30 was actually mounted on the side of the cupboard here, we've actually, um, this is where we've Utilize that space for the um, inverter controller and um, Cymarine. So as you can see, uh, 9.29 in the morning, Friday 1st of December. 30 amps per channel coming in as a, um, from sun. Um, so obviously that will increase throughout the day as well. And that's um, that just shows you very quickly how much solar you can capture at early times with um, the right system installed. Um, so up here we've got our two solar strings. So I've divided this particular van um, left hand side, right hand side. Um, we can look at total inflow and outflow. I've obviously got the inverter on at the moment because I'm going to switch the air conditioner on in a minute. Um, got our solar, sorry, got our state of charge and then we've also got our load. So um, 12 volt load coming in on a single channel and then our car and portable solar. So um, DC DC has been set up as a solar regulator as well for them to be able to plug a portable panel in when they're, you know, for all the reasons you want a port portable panel, basically either additional input for, for a faster recharge or you're using more energy in your van. Um, so with this system, they have the capacity to recharge their battery through um, solar on the roof. Yep. Add external solar panels, portable yep. solar panels, through their car when they're driving, or yep. if they must turn their car on, um, if they want to, um, yep. and I guess through mains AC power. Yep. Yep. Great. Yep. Um, so we've got an AC charger down here as well. Uh, it's a 40 amp charger. Um, so with regards to the 240, as I said at the beginning, this van had a 2000 watt inverter installed. The 2000 watt inverter was only wired to power points in the van. Um, so no air con, uh, no hot water system and no, um, they've actually got a fan forced uh, gas oven in the van as well. So the, the fan forcing 240 part 
wasn't available off the inverter either. Um, so that's all now been completely modified. I modified the 240 volt system so that they can have anything they want running um, from their inverter if they've got the available power to do it. Um, so there was a little bit of modification required for that as there were cables going to some unusual places. So we had to sort of pull half the van apart to be able to find all of that, but um, we were able to split that out rewire it, reconnect it. Um, so yeah, the, the, the system is, um, re it's got a lot of grunt basically. So even though it's a 400 amp hour system, so, you know, 400 in, in respect to, um, being able to run your air conditioner for extended periods of time when you've got no sun, um, you might not get as long as say a 600 amp hour system or something like that. But the fact that we've got so much solar capacity, 1140 watts of solar on the roof of this thing, uh, they can run their air conditioner um, without deficit during the day. So, you know, like if you're in full sun parked up on the side of the road uh, for a couple of hours, you can literally turn your air conditioner on, start with your battery at 100% and leave with your battery at 100%. Okay, so we put the air conditioner on and just sure. have a look at the existing... Um, ins and outs on the Cymarine and then we can identify, we could basically sort of um, have a look at how long the air conditioner can run and what's yep. going to happen with the battery. Alright, so you can see that I've just switched the air conditioner on and previously our total inflow and outflow was sitting at around 58 amps in, in the blue. Um, as you can see our solar hasn't changed, it's still just under 30 amps. Over here we can see we've got 700 watts of usage, so the air conditioner is um, using 700 watts. But the key point here is that we still have charge going into the battery even though we're running our air conditioner. That still means uh, that we've got a total inflow of nearly sometimes 2, sometimes 3 amps. So we're so, collecting more solar than we are using Correct, power. that's correct, yeah. More more energy consumption, sorry, more energy charge than energy consumption. So, um, as I say, you can, this will this will actually improve throughout the day as well. So, you know, this potentially will get upwards of 35 amps per channel. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's when you've got a system designed in and around um, specifically loads, as we like to do, we like to ask the question, around uh, what are you planning on using, we can then design the system so that it works how you want it to work. So these guys wanted to be able to run their air conditioner, they can run their air conditioner and still charge the battery. So it's a very, um, as I said at the beginning, it's a, it's a, a substantial system with a heap of grunt. Um, you know, they've, they've got a compressor fridge which I mean, that'll, that'll use about five amps an hour or whatever it uses, two and a half amps an hour on, um, on a cold day or a colder day. Um, and all the rest of the kit that was originally in the van still works. We've changed the fan force oven over so that if they want to cook a roast um, throughout the day and they want to fan force that, that's fine. They can absolutely do that now. So, so change it over as in you've you plugged it into... Made, made it available to, from so inverter. Yeah. yeah, made so. inverter, made it aver, inverter available, yeah. yeah. Um, so same as same as a previous build, we've, we've put Starlink in as well. Um, and uh, so Starlink is connected on the outside of the van through a pass through. Um, this is Dishy, this is the end that Dishy plugs into. Um, so that's actually a fully sealed waterproof connector. So the RJ45 plugs into the side of the van and then you slip the gland over top and you screw it on and then it becomes waterproof. So for those that were concerned that there might have been some issues with sealing of the RJ45, that's not the case. That's a fully IP66. So you thought about it? We've thought about it, yeah. <laughs> uh, so as I say, that's the build. Um, there's not really a lot more we need to go through with this one. Um, 
when we were testing yesterday, we had an overcast, not great day. Um, we saw some, you know, some spikes of good solar, but um, it was quite humid. So we're probably sitting where we live, you know, it was probably a, a, a low 30s kind of temperature day, but quite high humidity because of the cloud cover. That means the air conditioner was working harder. Um, so we started the day with a battery at 100%. And we put the van in the sun in the morning and turned the air conditioner on. So we're talking like eight o'clock in the morning. At the end of the day, when I turned, came out to check on the van at six o'clock at night, the air conditioner had been running all day on 22 degrees and we still had 50% of battery in the bank. Now that was an overcast day. So we never saw a consistent charge of 60 amps going into the battery yesterday. That didn't happen. It was maybe 20, 30 amps. Um, so that just shows you again that even in not ideal solar production con conditions we can actually get a good amount of charge into the system if the situation has been set up properly on the roof. Alright, so any questions let us know, I'm more than happy to answer any questions, get in touch any of social media platforms, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, contact us on the mobile, email, messenger. We'll answer all of them. Cheers, guys.